Since November was a terrible reading month, I made up for that in December, and we're going to talk about that today. The Gingerbread House and Other Stories. Five out of five. Do not ask me to form coherent thoughts for this or anything else in this series. Cannot be done. Nope. Just a bunch of really cute snippets of life and the characters from the Boy Who Steals Houses series. Wholesome. Perfect for breaking your heart in a good way. Next was Only Mostly Devastated. This was four out of five stars. I've been wanting to read this for a couple of years and I'm so glad I finally did. I'll admit I was a bit hesitant when I found out it was a retelling of Greece, as I am one of those few people who isn't a fan of the movie, but this book was so worth it. In fact, I may just have found a new author to join the list of favourites. As usual, I forgot to make any notes with my thoughts when I actually finished the book, so the best I can say is that it was cute, it was funny, the characters were lovable, and it made me cry. In other words, all the necessary ingredients for a great read. Next up was Everything Under the Moon, Fairy Tales in a Queer Light. This was four out of five stars. This book is a collection of short stories that are queer retellings of fairy tales. I am going to break this down into individual stories, but I do want to note that the illustrations in this book are incredibly beautiful. On top of that, each story has its own decorative border, which is a very cool addition. Let's see if I can find a couple of those to show you. So some of the illustrations are these. They're absolutely stunning and I love them. And you can see some of the borders in here as well. Um, each story has its own unique border around. And I think they are just incredible. It's an absolutely beautiful book. And if you like pretty books, First off, we have If the Shoe Fits. This had me hooked right from the start. It's Cinderella, but it's a competition and the main character isn't supposed to be there. She stole a pair of shoes and snuck in, not because she wanted to marry the prince. Oh no, she just wanted a holiday. This was brilliant. I loved it. And the twist, I was yelling the instant I died. I'm not quite sure what this one was inspired by or about, but it made me cry. Pretty sure that's the important thing when reading, right? Find the ones that make you cry, because that's how you know they were good. Luz Azul. Fun, adventurous, and a little bit mysterious. The Cherry Blossom Queen. I was warned the dog would die. And I think that might have made it worse. This is not a spoiler, it tells you at the start. Because I knew what was coming, and I ended up crying pretty much every time the dog was mentioned. Aside from that, the story was quite sweet. Let down your H-A-I-R. I did get a little confused when the name of the location changed, and it took me a couple of pages to figure out it was shortened. Maybe because it changed so suddenly after using the normal version to that point. It took me several more pages to understand the reference, but I laughed when I did. The ways the names were used in this were quite clever. I was a little bit iffy about the AI thing, I've got mixed feelings about that, but it's hard to know where they land given the way the story ended. I'm also not sure the way blind was used in this story was appropriate. Coming back to the ending, I was not expecting that. No real thoughts, just stunned. Fairest of all. This was definitely not what I was expecting. Inspired by Snow White, but in the point of view of the villain in the story. It was clever and it made me wonder what was going to happen. It's not often I read a story that makes me despise the main character. Alder, Azel, and the Edisto River. I was really excited to read this one because I saw it had an interesting, unique format but I found the story confusing and hard to understand at times. I still enjoyed reading it though. Seeing Colour. This was so sweet, so beautiful, was definitely crying. The Wooden Boy. Gay Pinocchio. Morsel. Hansel and Gretel, but wow, what a twist. I wasn't expecting this at all, it caught me off guard and it crawled into the parts of me that feel things that is to say, it made me cry. The Keyhole. 
I knew where this was going and I loved every second of it. I only wish I could read more with these characters. Moonfall. This one was a bit confusing and a bit odd, but quite interesting. I honestly, I did not recognize at least half of the stories in this book, but it does tell you which stories are done in this little um, cover page thingy thing, um, which is quite handy. I probably could go and find out what the originals are about, but why would I do that when I have queer versions? Next up was Fangirl. Four out of five stars, but really wasn't expecting the number of rape jokes early in the book. That is to say, I wasn't expecting any, but they were there more than a few times. They did abruptly stop and never come up again though. Aside from that, I was mostly enjoying this for the first half of the book. Even though it doesn't feel like there's a distinct plot. There are several subtle hinted plots, but it doesn't feel like there's a main plot. It was working though. It's cute, fun, and good for some laughs. It also has little snippets at the end of each chapter from either the series the main character is obsessed with, or from the fanfiction she writes. But the further in this book gets, the more it feels like it doesn't know what it's trying to do. Not to mention that one chapter that's just 20 pages of the weirdest heterosexual interaction I have ever read. Somehow, despite the ambiguity of the plot, the ending was satisfying, conclusive, everything tied up nicely. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I DNF'd this. It's not that it was bad, but it wasn't interesting to me. I read two of the short stories and they felt less like mystery stories and more like someone telling a skeletal recount of an event. It dulled down to what sounds like an interesting first-hand experience and just gave us nothing. There are no feelings there, no suspense or intrigue or desire to push forward, simply a bland statement of facts. And honestly, sometimes it even left out the facts and just expected the reader to believe there was a reason. Heartstopper, 5 out of 5. This was a reread, and it was wholesome as ever. Heartstopper 2, reread, 5 stars, wholesome as ever. Heartstopper 3, Reread, five stars, wholesome as ever. Hot stuff at four, five stars, reread. I didn't even notice the first time that this one spends about a third of the book written as journal update recaps. It's still sweet though, it's still great. Hot stuff at five, three stars. This is where we have problems. So many problems. Until now, I had never had an issue with an Alice Osman book, but this broke that. Heartstopper has been a great series for many reasons. It has been an incredibly important series for many people, but this book shattered a lot of those things. This is a series that has been promoted and praised because queer people are so often sexualized, especially in media, and it can be incredibly difficult to find queer media that isn't sexualized. But Hardstopper gave us that, and this has been one of the biggest things it has been praised for. Until Hardstopper Volume 5, where we're suddenly met with a book where sex is the entire focus. And I think this is an issue because of the way queer people are sexualized and the lack of queer media that portrays queer people in a non-sexual space. Because it is an issue, especially when it goes against what the series has been about up until this point. But that's not the only problem. One of the biggest issues is that the recommended reading age, at least for the first book, is 11 plus. And up until this point, that has been fine. But suddenly it's not fine. Suddenly it's no longer suitable for kids and a large chunk of the audience is going to be cut off from the series because it's no longer age appropriate. Which sucks, especially when it's already so hard to find books with queer characters that are open and honest and blunt and not sexualized. All of these things are incredibly important and people should be able to see themselves in books and other media 
without worrying that they will be taken away from them. And when a series has followed a particular standard through four books, you don't expect that to suddenly change and completely turn around. But this has done exactly that, and is likely to be quite alienating for a lot of the people who have found comfort and safety in the story so far. I've had several people disagree with me on this, claiming that it's fine and that it should be encouraged, but I think those people are entirely missing the point. 1. These books are recommended for children. 2. This series has been praised for being openly queer without being sexualized. So to turn around and make this entire book fixate on sex is a betrayal on multiple levels. It would be different if it had been part of the book, but that's all anyone talks about for this entire book. The whole thing. Stepfather Christmas. This is 4 out of 5 stars. This gorgeous book beautifully captures childlike wonder and Christmas spirit and doesn't leave us short on laughs. It's written in 25 chapters so the reader can do a chapter a day, like an advent calendar. I didn't read it in its intended way though, as I didn't realise until December 11th when I finally got around to starting the book. Once I realised this, I planned to catch up and continue reading a chapter a day, but by the time I caught up I was too invested to put it down. Hamlet fairy tales. 3 out of 5 stars. Fairy tale retellings but make them about Doctor Who creatures. Sounds pretty cool, not to mention how beautiful this cover is. Honestly, I was a little disappointed in this book for the most part. It had a lot of potential and some of the stories were good, but some of them weren't great. The first one was definitely my favourite, though this one doesn't seem to be a retelling. I could be wrong, but I have tried to find out what it would have originally been and have had no luck. It has weeping angels though, so of course it's cool. A few of them were good or had good parts, but a couple did let me down. If I had a second favourite, it was probably the Three Little Sontarans. Kiss Her Once For Me. 4 out of 5 stars. I saw this book in an op shop, just the spine, and jokingly said, ha, that looks gay, only to pick it up and realise that it was, in fact, gay. So obviously it was coming home with me. Obviously. Such a win, and also proof that I can sense queer books without actually looking at them. I am not a big romance reader, and I am incredibly anti-Christmas, but this was a pretty sweet book and the characters were fun. There's quite a bit of character growth with the main character, which we love to see. The characters and relationships are all unique, they don't just repeat the same attitude and feelings, there's complexity. And it is very queer. The main character is bi and demisexual, with a female love interest, a trans co-worker, a non-binary side character, and several queer minor characters. Goosebumps, Deep Trouble. 3 out of 5. This wasn't necessarily a bad book, but it didn't feel like a Goosebumps book. For about the first quarter of the book, it did, and it felt like something might happen, but then they spent most of the book looking after a mermaid. Nothing scary, just a mermaid. She saved them, they saved her. Mermaids. Then for about 0.2 seconds at the end, it flicks back to the original plot. Goosebumps, the Scarecrow Walks at Midnight, 4 out of 5 stars. I'm sure I read this one quite a few times as a kid, but it still had me guessing to remember certain details. This is a good one though. It's funny, it's creepy, and it keeps you waiting to see what's going to happen. And finally, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. 5 stars. I cannot believe it took me so long to read this. I've had this book for years, but put off reading it because I was struggling to find a copy of Through the Looking Glass, which I was gifted early 2023. This book is absolutely bonkers, and I adored it. At times I had no clue what was happening, not in a way that made me feel like I couldn't read the book, but in a this is pure nonsense and it's not supposed to make sense way. Brilliant. Just brilliant.